Well, the post was founded uh, at, a at a critical stage in the history of our country. Uh, that was the time, you know, we were just changing over from the one-party political system to a multi-party democracy. And uh, at that time, the entire media system was dominated by the government. So we were the only newspaper that came up as, as a weekly newspaper. And uh, three years later, or five years later, we became a daily newspaper to this day. Uh, we had a good intervention in the political uh, discourse and uh, ensuring that, you know, a democratic system is developed and entrenched in our country. So in that respect, the post has continued to have a role. And how do you see its role developing over the next, next five years or so? It will be on the same agenda. We have not yet developed a society that is perfect. We need you know, to deal with the issues of justice. We need to deal with the issues of fairness. We need to deal with the issues you know, of humaneness in the way we deal with each other. There's, there will always be a need to govern ourselves in a better way. There will be always need you know, to deal with issues you know, of accountability in public life. There's the, there will always be issues to deal with the economic justice. There will always be issues to deal with good governance. And of course, you know, there are global issues to be dealt with, and we have to play a role in that. We live in a world which is like almost one vessel, all of us. Uh, and that world, that planet of ours, is plagued by so many problems. We are traveling on this vessel that has got so many inequalities, so many injustices. Some are traveling in uh, luxurious cabins, some are in the hold. And uh, if these issues are not reconciled, I don't see how that vessel will arrive safely where it is headed. It's bound to hit an iceberg. The media has a role to play. And all media, not only one part of the media, of the global media, all media in the world have a role to play. What sort of challenges and intimidations have, have, have you and your company suffered uh, at the hands of the, of the authorities? Many injustices. You have people who wanted to exploit, who wanted to rape the society, who wanted to rob the poor. If you try to challenge them, they'll be fight. There are people who benefit, you know, from a poorly governed country. If you want the country to be governed in a better way, you are challenging them for a fight. There are people who live by stealing public resources. If you challenge the stealing or abuse of public resources and public office, you have a fight with them. And the world today, especially our poor world, is still full of that, where many people are parasitic on the state. And to be parasitic on the state, they have to get control of the political system. So. I think it's a permanent fight until those issues are addressed. So you, you, you have lawsuits brought against you and th threats of imprisonment? Or? Yes, uh, some time back, I was, yeah, in the mid-90s, I was sent to prison without a trial. They got fed up. They arrested me a number of times, taking me to court, and I was winning. And they just decided to use the parliament to lock me up. I was in prison for a month without a trial. Um, on the purported powers Parliament did not have. But despite all these challenges and threats that you faced, you still continue to do it and you continue doing it it's as long as you can. It's our duty, all of us, including myself, to struggle to create a more fair, just and humane society. And we cannot shy away from that duty, you know, because there are obstacles, because there are impediments, because there are difficulties. We have to confront those difficulties to create a better world. A better world won't just come. We have to struggle for it, you and me. And it doesn't matter whether, where you live. If you don't, you may live, you know, from in a developed country, but if you don't participate in my problems, those problems will, will follow you one day. There we are today, the world is threatened by terrorism. Where is terrorism coming from? Where is it originating from? Partly it's originating, or in the main, it's originating from very poor communities. 
who no one can ever imagine that they can possess the technology to make to do what they are doing, but they are doing it. Part of it is because you know the world did not address you know what was going on, the challenges that were going on in those societies. Look at Afghanistan. Who ever imagined that you know a terrorist could emerge from Afghanistan, one of the poorest countries in the world? And look at the resistance the Taliban have put up against the global armies, the most advanced military machines in the world. They have held them for how many years now? Hmm? So some of these problems, you know, cannot be tackled in isolation. They are global problems. We need to come together and, and deal with them. The same issue with the environment. We are destroying this planet. Some of it out of ignorance, some of it out of greedy, vanity, selfishness, some of it out of poverty. There's no one country that is going to deal with this problem because it's a global problem. And no one has the monopoly over global resources or even part of the world territory. We all need to deal with all these issues in solidarity.